Welcome to our review on controlling your body temperature. First thing we need to understand then is this term homeostasis. So wherever we see that word homeostasis, what it's referring to is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. So today what we're going to look at is the actual control of your body temperature. So in a normal human being, then the core body temperature should be around 37 degrees Celsius. So we can actually measure your body temperature with a variety of different devices. We can use a clinical thermometer, which can then be placed either in the mouth, the ear or the anus. We can use one of those temperature sensitive strips, which place on the forehead, and then you get the different color based on what temperature you actually are. Or we can use digital temperature probes, which clip onto a finger. If your body temperature goes above 40 degrees Celsius, then you're at risk of getting heat stroke and dehydration. And if these conditions are not actually treated, then you will die as a result of them. So having that very high body temperature of over 40 degrees Celsius is very dangerous. However, if your body temperature drops below 35 degrees Celsius, then you're at risk of developing hypothermia. Now, again here, if we do not treat hypothermia, then you will die as a result of it. So you can see that in reality, you've actually got a very narrow range of temperature that our body can work at without us being at risk of death. So the way this is actually controlled then is if our internal organs start to get too hot, then the blood flowing through them is going to carry away that excess heat. So that's going to obviously increase the temperature of the blood. As that blood passes through our body, that increased temperature is going to be monitored by part of our brain. And the brain then sends messages to various control mechanisms to help us bring our temperature back down into its normal limits. So if we're too hot, then what we'll see is we've got a few different things that our body can do to lower that body temperature. So the first thing that could happen is we could actually make more of our blood flow closer to the surface of the skin. That means we're going to lose more heat to the environment. And this is a process called vasodilation. We can also sweat more because as that moisture sits on the surface of our skin, then the heat is going to be transferred from the skin into the water and it will evaporate, taking it to the environment. And one that we could actually do as a behavioral change is we could just wear fewer clothes. If we're too cold, however, what we'll see is that our body's going to restrict the blood flow to the surface of the skin. And that's a process called vasoconstriction. We will also see the amount of respiration occurring in cells is going to increase to release more energy as heat. We will have shivering, which is going to generate the heat. And we could also choose to exercise to generate heat. So if you're really cold outside on a winter's day, you could just start jumping up and down, things like this, because that's going to be moving your muscles, which is then going to be carrying out respiration, which is going to be releasing heat energy. And obviously another behavioral change we can make is to put on some more clothes to insulate us. These little diagrams then just summarize what we've just talked about. The only other thing that you can see on the diagrams there that we haven't already mentioned is on the surface of your skin, you do have those little hairs. So that when you're cold, the little hairs are going to stand up vertically so they can become erect. And that's going to trap a layer of air against your skin, which acts as an insulator. However, when we're too hot, your hairs lie flat to obviously avoid that insulation effect. The process by which all these controls are brought about is through a negative feedback system. So the way this actually works then is the level is going to change and sense organs will detect that change. They will send the information to the control center in the brain that then sends information to a particular body structure to bring about a change to then bring the level back into balance. So what we've got is this process where it will be monitoring the changes, sending information to something to have an effect. And then as a result of that effect, things go back to normal. To give you an example of one of these negative feedback systems, if we consider the level of carbon dioxide in our blood. So normally it's at a set rate. And then if the level gets too high, that's going to be detected. And then the information that will be sent is going to the result in the breathing rate increases to remove the excess carbon dioxide. That then brings our carbon dioxide level in the blood back to normal again. If however, the level of carbon dioxide in the blood is too low, then the information is sent back to slow down our breathing rate 
to remove less carbon dioxide and again that brings us back to normal once more.